in the game activity. In the last lesson, we created the main menu and the event handler button. Also, we did a smooth transition from the game menu to activity and back. Now we open the game activity and create the class of our game panel. Then we create a variable. This is another way to create a new class. When the development environment underlines some variable with red, it means that it offers options. It offers to create a class, interface, numerical, and type parameter to game. We choose to create a new class. Now our game panel will be inherited from the surface view and not from activity. The surface view provides a separate area for drawing, in which actions are rendered in a separate thread, and that allows for quick handling of the drawing. Next, we click on Finish, and here is created our class that suggests to add a constructor, and we added it. Also, our class should include and implement the interface, surface holder, and callback. Accordingly, we create additional methods. We also add to our class an on-touch event handler. It will help to catch the events by clicking on the screen on the game panel. Next, we create two methods, such as draw and update. The draw method will keep all of our drawing, and the update method will update the gameplay. We're done for now with this, and we move on to the game activity. Here we have created a variable, and now we need to place it in the game activity. To do this, we assign our variable to be a new game panel. Then we pass the context, and at the same time we will give parameters to ourselves.
Here, we change the constructor. Subsequently, we'll need it later. Now we add the game panel to the relative layout. Next, we go back to the description of our game panel class. Here, we'll say a little bit about the gameplay, as it will take place on the game panel. The entire gameplay will be running in an infinite loop. In order to handle the events, we will use Surface View. This is our game panel. Also, the game panel will hold all classes of game elements. To create an endless loop, we will use the thread. Now, in our constructor, we specify that we get holder and add callbacks. It will allow us to intercept the surface view events. Then we type thread and put it in the variable. Next, we create the class and inherit it from the thread. Our class is created, so let's leave it blank for now. Here, we'll say that our thread is a new instance, a main thread. We pass two parameters here, such as holder, and this, us, to show that our thread knew its main parent, and the thread could turn to our game panel. The constructor is added, and we set the parameters to true. After that, we can handle the events from our surface view. Now we move on to edit the main thread. We create three variables on it, such as a surface holder variable that will keep our main surface holder, and the game panel variable that will keep our game panel so that our thread can easily call to it, and a running variable that will show if our thread is running or not. Now we go back to our constructor and fill in variables and assign them values. Now we're done with it.
Now, let's create a set running method to be a parameter. We use the boolean variable to pass the game state. Then, we create the main run method, where we will implement our infinite loop. We create a canvas in our run method, where we will be drawing later. Next, we create the infinite loop, and say, while it's running, we start doing our drawing. Then we see that the game is not paused, and our game panel does not display the state, so we add it now. To calculate the position change of various objects on the screen, we need to know the elapsed time since the game update. This value we can get from the main run function of the main thread class. This delta t value we will pass to each gameplay object. Now we create our variable that will record the time at the start of the drawing. We call it from the system. Next, we will place the drawing. Then we create a variable in which we place the value after drawing. Using the same method, we will get the value of delta t. It will be equal to the value difference of the end draw minus the start draw. Since this value is in a fraction of seconds, we divide it by 1000. This is its receiving in a second. We declare a variable to delta t. In the constructor, we specify that initially it is equal to zero.
Then, we will do the drawing inside of a run method of our main thread. We have the canvas variable, and we set the canvas value to null inside of the loop. And then in try method, we try to set the canvas value with surface holder and lock canvas. It is done in this order so that we can edit the surface holder and its drawing. Next, we finally select a method and return to our try. Then, we synchronize our canvas with the surface holder and we call up the update and drawing of our game panel. First, we deal with the update and as a parameter, we pass our value to delta t. And then, we deal with the draw method where we pass our canvas. Next, we add this parameter to the draw method and go back. Then, if our canvas is not equal to null in the method, finally, we unlock our canvas. At the end of the lesson, we created our game class and prepared everything for a drawing of elements. In the next lesson, we will place the background and make it looped around. Can't wait to see you there!